the song I had forgotten. Amen. I said, oh man, I'm up. <laughs> myself the We made it. Somebody's calling my name. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you right now, oh God. Thank you. For you are truly the one and only and true living God. Yes, yes, yes. We thank you, God, that you have allowed us thank to come you. to this thank moment you. at this time for this purpose. Yes, we ask now, God, that since we are all here, that you would put us on one accord with your spirit, that you would remove any distractions or hindrances from our minds and our hearts, God. Empty us out, O oh God, that you may fill us up and that we can be better than when we came. Speak now, O oh God, through me, God, and hide me behind your empty cross. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. Going back there. Book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. 1 Samuel, chapter 1. Verse 9. I got New King James this morning. You find it, would you please rest on your feet? 1 Samuel, chapter 1. We're starting in verse 9. New King James says it this way. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a, marriage, a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him from the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. For a few minutes, I would like to speak on this subject, a mother's prayer. A mother's prayer. How many people know that prayer changes things? Prayer changes things. There is a living and all-powerful God who answers prayer. Here's the arrangement. That the God who created everything, the stars, the sun, the moon, the sky, all that good stuff, uh, this planet, you and I, has allowed us to come before him to have access to that power. Prayer changes things. We don't simply recite words into air, church. We don't just speak words that fall on deaf ears. No, we talk to the God of creation. And it pleases God to respond to our prayers. All right, all right. Prayer is an open communication with God. Yes, 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 you can yes. talk to Him, and He'll talk to you. Right. You can call on Him at any time, and He will hear. Yes. It doesn't matter what time, because He's always available. Always. It don't matter how busy He is, because He can always handle one more situation. Yes. It, don't know, it 
matter how late it is, because he never sleeps nor slumbers. It don't matter where you are, because he's always present. It doesn't matter how big, because God is bigger. It doesn't matter how sad, because he's always ready to comfort. It doesn't matter how difficult, because there ain't nothing too hard for God. I just want you to know right now, church, that prayer changes things. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Is that what your Bible says? Yeah. And through the years I have found that the people who are the most praying and who pray the hardest are the mothers. Yeah. Church mothers, play mothers, birth mothers, stepmothers, mentoring mothers, whatever, mothers. Mothers, when mothers pray, there is a special sense of selflessness uh, because the only they only want the best for their child. They only want the best for who they're praying for. So mothers are are are, are an example of prayer changing things. If we look at our own history, if you just look around you, you will notice that there are more sisters in the church than there are men. It has been that way for as long as church can remember, amen. And so when you have the majority of the congregation being women, most of the prayers that are going up are women. And, and Brother brother Woods has said something today uh, real special that really feeds into this while he would teach a Sunday school while we were eating, that everybody comes through the mother, amen. And so we ought to be appreciative of that vehicle, amen, but also of the prayer that mothers render on behalf of their children. And even in our immediate uh, immediate African American culture or, or contemporary culture even as men are generally have been always uh, those who provide for the home or away or in past times that would be off into war. It would be the women and the mothers who were praying for their family. It would be the women who were praying for the men while they were working, while they would come home late tired. It would be the mothers who were praying. So why not give it up for the mothers who prayed for you and who are still praying for us today? There is a St. Augustine uh, he's, a, he's a famous bishop in church history. He was uh, over the church in North Africa. Few people know that. A few people will teach that. Amen. They'll, they'll have you believe that St. Augustine was from Europe. No, this brother was from Africa. Amen. Uh, his mother, Monica, uh, while he was out in the world, before he became this great bishop, he was in the world, and he was an adulterer church, and he had some issues, some gambling issues, and he was a, he was a juvenile delinquent. But while he was doing this, his mother had always been praying for her. So it was uh, Monica who was the purpose, who was behind the transformation of St. Augustine. Amen. It was Eunice and Lois who had brought Timothy to the Lord. It wasn't Paul, although that was his son in the ministry. His spiritual mother and biological mother and grandmother was Mary. I mean, it was Eunice and Lois. Amen. Susanna Wesley taught and educated John and Charles Wesley, the founders of the Methodist Church. Uh, it was her who gave them the instruction and who taught them how to be so tenacious and so tedious that they ended up becoming method methodological, hence the word methodical Methodist Church. Yeah. Susanna Wesley. I'm just talking about some mothers real quick, church. It was Mary who raised the Messiah. We don't know what happened to Joseph. We don't know much about him after uh, He's mentioned in the early part of the Gospels, but we do find Mary at the cross. Uh, the mothers have always been there, church. And this is the day that we say thank you to our mothers, uh, that they have prayed for us. Here in this text, we have already met Samuel. We talked about Samuel last week and how he got called into the ministry, but it doesn't. his story does not start with the call into the ministry. Amen. Samuel is in the Bible because of a woman named Hannah. Amen. And not just that by common sense, amen, because she birthed him, but because this mother prayed. Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about Hannah. Hannah is married to Elkanah. And, uh, she, they live in Ramah. They're wealthy people. They always make this trip every year from Ramah to Shiloh to worship and to praise the Lord. Uh, they have money. Uh, but here's an issue. Elkanah, the husband, has another wife. This other wife is fruitful. Sons and daughters. The Bible don't tell us how many. It just says she has sons and daughters. That's an indication, amen, that it may have been too much to list for the purpose of the story, amen. And so every time, year after year, when they would go to make sacrifice and go to worship the Lord, 
that the husband would give portions to the wives and their children. But he had to give more to Hannah because she didn't have any children. And to make matters worse, if it wasn't enough that she had to deal with uh, this woman on the side, amen, her husband was inconsiderate because when she is grieved because she does not have any children, he has the nerve to say, ain't I better to you than ten boys? Ain't I been better to you? Did not pay this bill? Did not pay that bill? Did not give you this, that, and the other? What you upset about kids for? Don't I treat you right? Amen. Amen. Amen, lights. I'm going to preach it anyway. And so, uh, she doesn't just have to deal with that, but she also has to deal with the other woman teasing her and making fun of her every time. Can't you see it, church? Paniah. Every time she gets pregnant, she's just rubbing her belly and giving Hannah the side eye, knowing that it's just tearing her up on the inside because that's what she wants to do. She wants to prove that she's better. She has something that she, that Hannah doesn't have and that's something Hannah can't provide for herself. So Hannah, we meet her. She is deeply distressed. The Bible even says that she is bitter in soul. Have you ever been bitter in soul? Uh, that's not a good place to be, church, but if you're real with yourself right now, you can admit that there's been a time, point in time in your life where things were not going your way, and then you were just a bitter person to be around. Uh, but this brings me directly into my first point, that despite the fact that she had to deal with this inconsiderate husband, the fact that she had, besides the fact that she had to deal with this uh, irritating side chick, besides the fact that she had to deal with all this stuff that she's going through, she still, point one, she prayed through her sorrow. There it is. Uh, she prayed through her sorrow. Because this is what happened. They all go there to worship. Everybody eats. By the way, in the Bible says she hasn't been eating. She's at the table. She didn't eat nothing. Everybody else ate. When they ate, went to sleep. She got up by herself to go pray. Church is going to take that sometimes. At some point in time, you're going to have to just tell everybody to be quiet. Let everybody get away from you. You're going to have to go to the Lord by yourself where you can be uninterrupted so that you can do some things and say something that's on your mind that you can, that God can only do for you. And church, I wonder if there's somebody in this place today, even on a Mother's Day, you said, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, but I got sense enough to know that I, if I can get to the house of the Lord, if I can just press my way into prayer that God can do for me what I can't do for myself. How do you know I've seen him do it before? I've seen him do it for this mother. I've seen him do it for that mother. I've seen him do it for my own mother. So here I am praying and praising through my sorrow. Ooh, but can you pray when your bills are due? Ooh, can you pray when your body aches? Your back hurts, your knees hurt. Can you still get down on your knees and bend that back? Can you pray when you're lonely? Can you pray when you're down and out? Can you pray when your kids are acting? Can you pray when God seems like he's not talking to you? Can you pray when your enemies are attacking you? Can you pray when your job fires you? Can you pray when you can't find a job? Can you pray no matter what's going on? Well, I submit to you today, church, that if you pray when your bills are due, God will make a way out of nowhere. I pray. I submit to you that if you pray when your body aches, that God can be a healing to your body. I, pray. I submit to you that if you pray when you're lonely, that God will be a company to you. Uh, if you pray when you're down and out, that God will pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. I just got real Baptist on you. If you pray when your kids are acting out, I submit to you that God will take care of your kids. If you pray when God seems like he's not talking to you, he'll talk back to you once you start talking to him. If you pray when your enemies attack you, the Bible says he'll make your enemies a footstool. If you pray when your job fire you, that's alright. God will supply all your needs. If you seek first the kingdom of God, I'm preaching better than y'all right now. If you pray to your sorrow, God can't take care of evil. Because praying through your sorrow means that you're going to get through it. Amen. she prays though because this is how she prays she prays a specific prayer if you pray a specific prayer God can answer a specific answer if you pray a general prayer God may give you a general answer let me give you an example uh, Lord could you please bless me with a job noble prayer amen you just want them to meet your need. You try to be humble. But guess what might happen? You may end up with a job that you don't like. And then you have to live with the reality that, oh, well, I prayed for this. 
<laughs> Better be thankful for it. He bless you what you pray for. But I dare you, church, I invite you to go before God with boldness, knowing that He can do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or think. And pray specifically for what you want God to do. What's the worst that can happen? He's saying, no, well, you just be where you are anyway. But if he says yes, you might have exactly what you prayed for. She prayed through her sorrow with a hope that God was going to do exactly what she had prayed for. Yeah. Huh, but let's not deify Hannah, please. Because even though she prays specifically, she, there are some ways we need to tweak Hannah in her prayer that we might not want to model after all. She prays the if-then prayer. If you do this, then I'll do this. Uh, I know at times we may be down and we may not realize what we're doing, church, but that's not the way to pray. The way to pray that Jesus taught us is, uh, not my will be done, but let your will be done. But here's grace for Hannah, and here's grace for you, that sometimes even if you pray the if-then prayer, God will give you the if-then answer. Amen? Amen. Yeah. She prayed through her sorrow. All right. uh -huh. Then, my second point, she poured out her soul. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Amen. She poured out her soul. So after she's praying, she's been praying for a while now. Eli's sitting by the door. He's, he, he's waking for whatever reason. He goes and he, he's looking at her, but he sees her mouth move, but ain't nothing coming out. This is good, church, because she had something to say a while ago. She prayed this very specific prayer out loud because she said, but now she's been praying so long that she's poured out her soul. She just don't have any more energy. She, she just don't have the sound to say what she's saying. But thanks be to God that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Who's been in Bible study like that? When we don't have words to say the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us with moanings and groanings that we can't, that can't be uttered. Amen. So, so she's getting a prayer through even though nothing's coming out. But Eli, even though he's a priest, he don't understand this. So he walks up to the sis sister and says, how long are you going to be drunk? <laughs> Listen. Listen, church, she's not even supposed to be where she's at. Because women aren't even allowed to be inside of the tabernacle. So instead of taking issue with her being there, he's accusing her of being drunk. Church, please be wary of people when they're praying, doing something that they're supposed to be doing, and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. They might just be closer to God than you are. Amen? She's pouring out her soul. Yes. And, what's, and, and here's the issue. He, she tells her, I, I'm, he, she tells him, I'm in anguish. It's out of my anguish and my grief. What you're, what you're witnessing me doing is all that I've got left. In fact, I ain't even got nothing left. I can't even talk no more. I've been praying like this until you interrupted me. <laughs> Amen. Ooh, Lord have mercy. But God is behind this whole thing. Not all the time, church, will God be the source of your pain. Not all the time will God be the one who brought it upon you. But sometimes, God is the one who you're wrestling with. Because what we read in the preceding verses that we didn't cover, but you'll read on your own, I know. It says uh, that God, I think you caught it, God closed the womb of Hannah. God closed the womb of Hannah. So while she's crying and while she's in anguish and while she's disgusted, it's really God who's behind the situation. So God has arranged this trouble for her to go through whereby she can pour out her soul to him and then be closer to him. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Okay, here, let me make a plan for you. When me and my wife started seeing each other, hey amen, I was a freshman at OBU, and so I had uh, come down, um, and, and the fair was going on. I had never been to the fair before, and fairs in Colorado, they're not a big deal, you know, um, but I was used to amusement rides, to amusement parks and, and rides, so we're walking through, we're going to get on this ride, and this ride spins this way, and then it spins more as it's going around. So I said, okay, I can do this. I don't like spinning rides. Church, I don't do well. I get sick. Hey, Amen. I get nauseous. If I do one, I'm probably out for the rest of the day. But I said, I'm going to get on this ride. And what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm going to sit on the inside of the car because I know that the velocity of the ride will make her scoot closer. Hey, Amen. I'm trying to create something here. Watch me. Hey, Amen. I didn't get four kids. Hey, Amen. Watch out. And so, and so I know that the velocity, amen, will make her scoot closer. And as the ride goes faster and as the ride gets scarier, the closer she will get, amen. Whether she acknowledges it or not, the situation is bringing her closer to me. And I arranged this whole thing from the beginning. Well, church, there's a word from somebody from God that God has arranged this whole thing. You think it's scary. You think something's going on in your life. You think it's trouble. But God has set this up from the beginning that once it sits going, once it starts speeding, once it starts getting real hard, that's when you can start putting the scooting closer to God. And before you know it, you and God are walking out of there holding hands. She poured out her soul to her God and God received her prayer. Third point 
poured out her soul. She praised until her Samuel. Oh, you missed the shout, you amen. That's a, that's a, ooh, that's something by itself. She praised until her Samuel. Verse 17, this is what it says. Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition which you've asked of him. So God's speaking through him, basically. She said, Let your main servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate. And her face was no longer sad. Wow. There you go. There you go. You missed it. You missed it. She hadn't eaten in a long time, church. She'd been sad all day long. She's been praying all night long. But after she prays, he says, go in peace. And so what she did, the first thing she did is, oh, on our way home, we need to stop and get something to eat. I need to wash my face up and put a smile on my face. And it just reminds me of those mothers. It reminds me of my own mother. It reminds me of my grandmother that no matter what they was going through, they still had a smile on their face. Oh, what's different, Pastor? I got to tell you what's different. Because, yeah, she's going back home to help and I, this inconsiderate husband. She's going back home to this irritating side chick. She's going back home to all this situation. But the difference is this. She done had a little talk with Jesus. Told him all about her troubles. And he heard her by and by. So now, she's got a little uh, going in her church. She's excited now. She's anticipating God to do something. So what the Bible says that she does is right there in verse 18, verse 19, unless you tore it out. It says, and they rose early in the morning. Church are open. Yes. Put your hands again.